This podcast contains strong language, adult themes, spoilers, bad jokes, occasional foreign swearing, and flimsy connections to James Bond, as well as unsubstantiated claims of Chuck Norris's godlike abilities. Listener's discretion is advised. The Firewalker, a god among men. He walked this land, walked among its people, his spirit strong. In time of need, he would fly to the sun and gather his power. Oh, such power. But then the men across the sea came. They came for gold. So the Firewalker returned to the sun, and there he walks among the flames to gather power once again. To one day return, and that day may come soon, unless two hapless adventurers and a beautiful legal secretary can stop it. With bromancing, romancing, and general witty banter, this terrific trio must face ancient legends, black magic, and the last living descendant of the Firewalker, and prevent him from getting his hands on a magic knife and perform a brutal human sacrifice to claim the power. And if they happen to find the legendary treasure of the Firewalker while they're at it, then all the better. Accompanied by the high-flying, spin-kicking, and face-punching antics of Chuck Norris, witty-ish one-liners by Lou Gossett Jr., and the ever-charming Melody Anderson potentially sporting psychic powers, we are the last action-adventure heroes, and this is Firewalker. Hello, action aficionados, and thank you so much for joining us once again as we dive, or rather plummet, into cinematic oblivion to unearth the unsung heroes of the past. Today, we last action heroes make history as we roundhouse kicks, roundhouse kick each other uh, back to 1986 and the movie Firewalker, starring a true action legend and icon, Mr. Chuck Norris, making his first appearance on this podcast. Sadly, not in person, though. We did ask nicely, but he said he was too busy shooting hoops with bowling balls, so he couldn't make it. Oh, there we go. Hey. <laughs> there we go. But don't worry, you're still in good hands with me, your smooth-talking demigod host, the Jesper Walker, and my pod squad of opinionators, Chuck Leon. Whoa! Bjorn Norris and yep. Fire Dan, or if you prefer Chuck Joris, Chuck Loris, Chuck Bjoris, and Chuck Doris. <laughs> Doris? <laughs> Fuck Boris. <laughs> <laughs> also, a big shout out and thank you to our fifth hero, Henrik, the true hero of this podcast, who makes us sound so much better Chuck than we Horace. deserve. <laughs> yeah, Chuck Horace. <laughs> <laughs> and who also happens to have a very lovely singing voice. Now, this yeah. episode is also a bit special because it is our birthday of sorts. So last November, we launched our very first Last Action Heroes episode on Commando. Some controversy around this, though, because we technically launched way back in August of last year with a pre-show episode. But anyway, so congratulations to us and a big warm to all you listeners who have stuck with us uh, for this past year. Way! Yay! And very speaking much. of you, dear listeners, we're so glad to have you with us. And if you like uh, what you're hearing, please leave us a review on Apple, Spotify, Google, or wherever else you get your podcast fix. And also feel free to get in touch with us on Twitter at TL underscore Action Heroes or on Instagram at The Last Action Heroes. As always, we will be selecting a few key scenes and topics to focus on. And as always, we will be spoiling everything about this movie. So if you haven't seen it, don't switch us off. Just put us on pause. It's okay. Go watch it and then come back. Go on. It's okay. We'll... Um, We'll just hang back. I'm, I'm going to suggest and you're back. that they, hey, they, back. they don't actually go and watch it. I'm just going to throw that out there. Yeah. Don't bother going and watching it. The movie spoils it. itself. <laughs> yeah, just, <laughs> just, just stay here. <laughs> so, uh, let's do this. So, guys, my fellow podcasters, I promised you that after Batman, we would go to the very opposite end of the cinematic greatness <laughs> scale. And mm -hmm. oh my, how far from greatness have we fallen? But have we fallen too far? Should this one have stayed buried, just like the Firewalker's mystical dagger? 
maybe. But we're off on an adventure now to find out. And as with every adventure, it starts with a first step. So let us start with a quick round the microphone before we dive in. Are any of you guys Chuck Norris fans? Not after this film. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but I have, I have to ask, like this, this yeah. film, is this... Th- is this like a, a a nostalgic, like sentimental choice, or had you not seen this? Or? It is. It is partly that. So I think I've only ever watched this once, and and I chose that it. Was be- <laughs> that was enough. That was enough. I chose it because uh, I remember actually. So it, I mean. When I was a kid, I think I only have ever watched three Chuck Norris movies of him starring in it. So, um, uh, what was it? Uh, this one, Firewalker, uh, Invasion USA, and Code of Silence. Uh, and this mm. one kind of stuck with me a little bit because uh, I thought it was actually quite a, you know, fun movie. Uh, it's Fuck one of those movies know. that I think you watched at a children's <laughs> birthday party and all the boys loved it. And then back they went in, out. Back in the day when, when you were pots seven. didn't matter. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I went out into the woods like after afterwards and pretended to be like on a quest to find the firewalker dagger <laughs> kicking and the uh, shit out kicking the shit other. out of each other <laughs> and everything and uh yeah just had uh, just had a lovely uh, fun time with it and uh yeah so that's why i thought uh, this would actually be a fun great one to uh, to feature on this uh, podcast here so i don't have any strong personal feelings uh, towards it uh uh, I just thought that this here would be a fun way to uh, get chuck norris on board uh, as well <laughs> i didn't have yeah. much fun <laughs> and I'm sure that will come out in the podcast well, as well. I, mean, I, w- I watched a lot of Walker Texas Ranger in the past, and it, it felt like watching that, but in a def- different setting. You know, <laughs> I've, I've never seen a Chuck. This is my first Chuck Norris film. Oh wow! I don't know if it's going to be my. I'm pretty sure it might be my last. I don't know. It's not not a good one to start with. It's a funny one with Chuck Norris because, like, he feels like he's supposed to be this really big thing and you know there's all these um you know uh, facts about his um godlike abilities and everything i say facts yeah you know. did you did um, you know that uh, chuck norris once visited the, the, the uh, virgin islands no no yeah they're just called islands now <laughs> 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 he also doesn't do pu- push-ups he pushes the ground away and he doesn't sleep he waits <laughs> Oh, that's the Chuck Norris jokes. I got a feeling there's going to be an hour and a half of this. <laughs> yes, pretty sure. just just Chuck Norris jokes, chucking Chuck Norris jokes the whole podcast. <laughs> chucking jokes. Um, yeah. Leon, have you watched any Chuck Norris movies uh, before? To me, he's just the guy that Bruce Lee fucked up in Way of the Dragon. Yep, <laughs> that, that's yeah. that's pretty much Chuck Norris to me. Him or the internet meme. Was well, that yeah. his first movie role? Actually, his first time on screen. Well, the internet meme. Well, that would have been seventies. So yeah, yeah. he does. He did some stuff in the sixties, I think, as well. Right. Uh, but yeah. Okay. Interesting. The cool so, thing about yeah. him, though, is like he's he's like an actual martial artist. Like he has, you know, a bunch of black belts in different styles. And yeah, it's a shame and, they didn't know, use it was, in this film. Yeah. It yeah. Might, well, might have been good. <laughs> <laughs> He's not an actor, though, yeah. That's, no, no, I was going to say, I get the impression he's just in films because he can kick good, like Jean-Claude Van Damme. Like, yeah, yeah. He just like you can talk good. Jean-Claude. Yeah. I do good kicking. I do good kicking. That's enough, yeah. So I guess to that question, I don't know if you Chuck Norris fans, I think that's a resounding no. Did um, you know that um, some kids can piss their name in the snow, but Chuck Norris can piss his name into concrete? Fact, actually, yeah. I looked it up. Fact. <laughs> All right, uh, I'm going to start us out here. So, uh, Firewalker, um, we start the movie in the desert where a bunch of dune boogies, whatever you call them, are thundering through the dunes in pursuit of a jeep with our two hapless heroes, Max and Leo, played by Chuck Norris and Lou Gossett Jr. Unfortunate heroes as they are, they manage to crash into the only oasis there is for miles, and soon they what find the themselves yeah. <laughs> and soon they find themselves lying spread eagle on the hot desert sand, strapped to poles, an evil colonel nemesis of sorts we're never really sure sort of what he is gloating uh, over them and then subsequently leaving them in the hot sand to roast to a slow death um so yeah as yeah. far as character introductions go uh what do we think of this as a way to introduce our two i like the first scene it was it was quite chaotic just madness craziness it, this know, is a canon whole... film again isn't yeah. it? it is <laughs> it, 
Is it like a, a thing for canon films to feel like they've started halfway through, like they did with <laughs> Masters? Like, <laughs> like, there's definitely a theme here. There's so, definitely a theme here. So, you know, they set up this nemesis in this scene, and he's like a strange sort of Chinese guy, Bond villain with the big scar. Mm. He's yeah, got so that like, dune like buggy yeah. with the Chinese lanterns swinging on it and stuff. That is, without yeah. a doubt, the best thing about this film. That, that little <laughs> Chinese dune buggy is awesome. But he's in like military gear, and then his, his sort of right hand man is um he's in like a hawaiian shirt and a new york yankees cap and it's just fucking yeah. bizarre <laughs> i found the whole opening really difficult like, i couldn't figure out the locality of this place because it seemed like they were being chased by middle eastern stereotypes and mm. then the general is chinese <laughs> and then the other guy like you say is wearing a hawaiian shirt and it's like where the fuck are these guys? <laughs> it's, it's a diverse film. Deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't think yeah. the film really cares who they are either, to be fair. They don't. <laughs> no. I feel like this is actually a theme throughout the whole film. They yeah, don't really yeah. care. They get a lot of the things just confused and just chuck it in because it's... It's like Aztec, it's... Mayan, Apache, yeah, Egypt. Exactly. You know, like they don't really The care. whole legend thing is just one yeah. mishmash of everything. It's kind of like I, kind of you know, going back to the whole thing about uh, you know watching this at birthday parties. It's a little bit like an overexcited seven-year-old telling a story of uh, modern-day adventurers. Like yeah. if he was retelling yeah. Indiana Jones or something like that, right? Uh, and then just throwing in all kinds of cool stuff because he thinks it's cool. That, that seven-year-old thing, I think, is a theme that's carried throughout this whole film. I feel like they yeah. act like seven-year-olds. It's written by a seven-year-old. Like The jokes land about as well as the seven-year-old's. Yes, exactly. Yes. <laughs> so that whole locality thing, I mean, the nerd in me had to check this out because, you know, we, we got the general, he's Chinese and the flag on his collar is actually a South Vietnamese flag. Mm. And then later when they get away and they're walking away, they're saying, oh, you know, we go to Arizona. Arizona's 5,000 miles away. I was like, I need to find out where these guys are. <laughs> <laughs> so I yeah. started Googling it and I tried to find whatever. <laughs> yeah, I, I hit upon possibly there. there's a desert in South Vietnam down in the South Coast. I thought that possibly might be where they are, but why are there Middle Eastern guys like chasing them in a buggy? I don't understand. I've it's got a feeling weird. that they were desperate to come up with some sort of start scene. So they basically just had the intern run into the <laughs> movie studios, uh, you know, storage and pick out any uniform, clothes, whatever, and then just yeah, throw it on a couple of various extras. And then uh, yeah. this is just how it is. Um, it felt this, like the kind of stuff Team America was taking their piss out of. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it actually it does. Yeah. Um, right. Okay. Huh. So, Oh, um, uh, yeah, uh, Leo and Max, what do we think of those two guys? Um, I mean, uh, the chemistry, the banter, like, like how do these two stack up with other famous movie duos? What do we think? I yeah. like that they both have three letter names so they can remember them. Yeah. <laughs> Good point. Good point. Yes. <laughs> they are stupid motherfuckers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not the, the brightest very... sponge. No. Yeah. They're very disrespectful. I mean, as like treasure hunters, they're very kind of disrespectful to cultures in general as well. Yeah. But uh, yeah, we'll get into that. Uh, yeah. I like later. the product placement when they're staked into the sand. And the general's <laughs> like, you'll hold the water of life in your hand. And he gives that bottle of Perrier and he's holding it like labeled. Yeah, from the Perrier water. <laughs> and then right Chuck the smashes it. It's like, Perrier, even Chuck Norris dehydrating in the desert wouldn't drink it. <laughs> 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 I like I like the line when, uh, when the general is like saying like, oh, you, you're going to be here and in the sand you can't drink and uh, you know your your lungs are going to yeah. dry out and then Chuck Norris goes yeah and you'll still be bald oh <laughs> this man's <laughs> bald and then he's bald the other yeah. <laughs> Leo is bald like, motherfucker like, yeah. <laughs> that was pretty funny I, I thought actually but yeah. yeah it goes downhill from there yeah pretty much <laughs> yeah. um so yeah uh, big spoiler now they escape uh, like uh, Dan say which I think um, is a shame <laughs> it should have ended they're still in the desert the whole thing was a dehydration dehydration like a dream. <laughs> oh that would be a yeah. great kind of you know after credits I mean it's possible or something like that you know how when you're dreaming you just sort of jump from scenario to scenario and nothing really makes sense that is very yeah. similar to this film whoa <laughs> they also have all that Indian mysticism in this so it could have just been like a yeah. like a fever fever dream or something yeah yeah. I think that makes a whole lot more sense than the rest of the movie here. So, yeah, wow. <laughs> um, yeah. So, yeah, big spoiler, they escape Norris, showing how badass he is by breaking this bottle of Perry water left by the colonel and then uh, using the shards to cut the ropes, or at least we presume so. Then a 
very quick transition into their favorite bar in Arizona. Uh, don't know how they got there or anything, but you know who cares. Where is it we Arizona? Meet... Like, do they establish that? <laughs> yeah, I'm not the entirely bars sure. In Arizona, I, think I think it is because he says they would really like a you know. They, they really need that map from Indiana Jones when you can see the, the yeah. planes as like flying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, so yeah, we quickly transition into their favorite bar in Arizona, where we meet Patricia, and life is suddenly a little mm. brighter, um, a little nicer, and also gets a little bit weirder, a so, bit more melodic, perhaps. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. fucking oh, 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 hell! And for people yeah. who don't know, her name is Melody. Very good, Melody. <laughs> yeah, wow. <laughs> You've just topped the podcast. No, I don't think we can like, you know, follow like that in any way. game is on fire today, Mike. <laughs> that, that's what I do. <laughs> that's what he does. <laughs> <laughs> um, he so yes, uh, Patricia <laughs> is played by the lovely Melody Anderson, who is making her second appearance on this podcast because she was also Dale Arden, uh, the love interest of Flash Gordon in Flash Gordon, uh, the movie. Um, and yeah, what do we think of Patricia sort of becoming now the... Uh, third part of this uh, and making this duo a trio now. I really like Flash Gordon. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Good, Leo. Yeah. Leon, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> mm. I really liked her character. She was my favorite character in the whole film. You know, she's bubbly, she's fun, and, you know, she just kind of mm. brings a whole lightness to the film. What I didn't like was that she is constantly mm. being perved and groped and flat out nearly raped quite yeah, a fucking lot Manuel, film, man. Which, like the, <laughs> that scene was a bit yeah there's yeah, also yeah. a yeah. weird thing uh i seem to have noticed that whenever she's on whenever sort of the camera is on her the camera always seems a little bit sort of more sort of you know Booby. the lens seems a little bit Curvy. more foggy yeah it's all like a little bit more kind of dreamlike <laughs> yeah. and everything like that which uh well yeah. she has some kind of amnesia or some weird cognitive disorder or something that don't try never digging explain. too deep into this yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah but <laughs> that, no that, that was really confusing to me because yeah. she keeps fainting and stuff and then it, it, by the last third of the movie she's she's fine they yeah never explain what it was yeah she's got like a third eye or something yeah she? and apparently she's in tune with the spirit world and stuff <laughs> like that and uh i mean i think she says her you know her day-to-day -day job is a legal secretary and then why she suddenly has these psychic powers they never really explain um, or anything but uh, yeah it makes her feel like an outsider so she goes and mm. f then for some reason she's got a hand on this treasure map type um legend or something like that and then she figures <laughs> well in order to prove that i'm not totally crazy i'm gonna go off and find this treasure which again makes perfect sense in uh, in this movie look I, I think we're in an impossible position because what we tend to do on this podcast is like discuss the film scenes and how they work and maybe like the reasoning behind it and the reality with this film is there is no fucking reason for anything and we're going to try and explain things and it's just not possible yeah. You're like, yeah you know she's a legal yeah. secretary and she's possibly yeah. got this like it, it doesn't matter it doesn't matter yeah, what's going on <laughs> That's actually something I struggled with watching the film, trying to analyze it. I was like, I, I, well, that, I that, was your, that, that was your problem. That was your problem. Your problem was that you tried to think about it. You should <laughs> yeah. just enjoy enjoy the ride. It's it's one of those movies, <laughs> and yeah. you can. And other people are in a bar, and they're going to go because, and try and find a dagger because, because exactly because I like this movie <laughs> way better on the second viewing when I didn't really think about it. I could just you know like things just happen, and you know I think that it's one of those movies you shouldn't yeah. Can I ask a question? Second time you watched it, did you have your yeah. phone in your hand and you were kind of using that <laughs> yeah. as well? Yeah, me too. It's really fucking hard to watch this film, isn't it? I watched it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but it, yeah, it, it has its charm, you know. Um, yeah, I, I enjoyed parts of it. It, Yeah. Something I thought was funny with this bar scene is how it ends with the really non-committal assassin yeah. who shows up, fires two arrows, they escape out what looks <laughs> yeah. like a window, and he's like, oh, I'll just I'll go home. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's 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 to like chase that. them. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, Patricia... Uh, uh, has this map that leads to a legendary treasure. She needs two uh, guys to accompany or, um, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, I'm not even sure why, but anyway, she needs these two guys. Um, <laughs> so uh, she has this legendary treasure map to a cave that's not too far away, uh, but someone else is after it as well. According to her, it's a red cyclops. Ooh, scary. Um, someone, uh, like uh, like Dan said, <laughs> he even tries to kill uh, Patricia at the bar, but her, Max, and Leo, they narrowly escape, and they head to the cave on the map. And so the adventure begins, and we come to this mystical cave that just happens to be quite 
uh, quite close by. Um, yeah, uh, who wants to kick us off? We're um, we're in the cave now. So was there was there scene? a red cyclope? I don't remember a red cyclops in this movie. <laughs> no. I was actually just going to say, yeah, she calls it. That, I thought she was a bit mean in this because she's like, oh, he's a red cyclops. He's, he's Native so, American, yeah. so is that what she's yeah, implying by that? Racist, he's disabled, <laughs> so is that what she's implying by he's yeah, a cyclops? It's such a weird like, thing to say. Uh, yeah. <laughs> It's not uh, really a man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and again, it's, kind of, it's a lot of these weirdness that's in this movie. Like, where does that whole red cyclops thing even come from? I mean, there's no need to call that. I started out. thinking like the knife is the red cyclops or something. Because it blows. <laughs> They'd already chucked in all these other Greek, mythologies. Yeah, exactly. Oh, fuck it. We exactly. haven't done Let's any Greek mythology. Well. Let's put a cyclops in so, this. So, we're in the cave um, uh, where there's... I, so... I think in the cave, they're hoping to find the gold. They don't find the gold. What they actually find is a <laughs> knife, knife and a uh, wall painting. What's it called? A mural or something like that. Um, which yeah. is hinting at something. And um, these two uh, treasure hunters being their uh, probably usual goofy self, they start to take <laughs> selfies of uh, pulling weird faces and everything in front of this and generally being quite disrespectful to the whole thing um you know there's like this uh, uh was it burial um thing in like the middle and uh, uh yeah they just climb up on that and start to goof around which is yeah again like seven-year-olds who's you know they're like the kind of seven-year-olds that you would like to lose in a crowd of people <laughs> yes <laughs> <Very much. laughs> i'm sorry where did, where did got, kevin go uh you know Bjorn, I've got to say it. When anyone else was watching this scene, could anyone else, did anyone else only just see Bjorn in a cargo shirt? Like, oh, totally. It's <laughs> chucked, chucked <laughs> the whole way Because through. of the stash. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Stash, the combat abilities, you know, the martial arts. I need arts to grow thing. my hair out. Yeah. <laughs> you would so. rock a mullet, mate. It would yeah, be wicked. mullet, yeah. <laughs> Chuck um, Doris. This was... I feel like we should have a mullet off between Douglas and Chuck Norris. Like... Oh, <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's an interesting one. Yeah, I don't know. Leon. Leon as well. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're in this cave. We've uh, we found the knife. We found the first clue in the legend of the Firewalker, and then they get attacked by um, these uh, yeah, by, Native Americans. By who? Sorry? Are they Native Americans or are they Mayans or? It doesn't really... Who knows? Who the fuck are they being attacked by here? <laughs> I, I actually don't know. Um, like that he jumps out and he just like basically gives her a big cuddle. He's like, attack her. Ah, and like yeah. He holds on to her. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, the movie doesn't really explain uh, who. And also, I mean, if they really wanted to kill her, then why don't they just bring their own guns to kill her with? Like, you know, clearly they tried with a bow and arrow in the bar earlier didn't work uh, so what so so why are they thinking that um you know dressing up in the war outfit and coming at her with a spear is going to do any better they weren't anyway. thinking that's the problem they weren't with this thinking, film exactly just like the script writers <laughs> in general <laughs> i actually checked out the guy who wrote the screenplay and he wrote like three other films and they're all unheard of random shit and i thought yeah that that story checks out <laughs> kind of yeah. makes sense <laughs> the director as well had done some pretty decent stuff like he did like the guns of navaroni and stuff so i don't know how he ended up sort of doing guns of ravioli <laughs> you misread it <laughs> um so yeah um they get attacked uh, and we also here establish that uh norris can't shoot for shit which kind of becomes a little bit of a running joke ish uh throughout uh, the whole movie like he like he sports uh, a gun like any ad like any adventure probably should um but he can't shoot at all there is this again this is a seven-year-old uh, telling it uh, where Norris shoots a bullet that's then ricochets around the whole this cave for I, I don't know it feels like a good minute before it actually hits its uh, target um, which uh, you know when you're a kid that shit's funny when you're an adult it kind of feels a little bit mm, yeah okay jokes sort of overrun its course a bit maybe did you know that Chuck Norris lost his virginity before his own dad did <laughs> I didn't know that <laughs> interesting <laughs> Other facts. Other facts. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's funny what we say about he he can't shoot because he can't fucking drive either. Like every time he's in a van, he crashes it. So that's like, what, true. Actually. He, he is he's presented as like a ten year old. Like throughout the whole yeah, film, he's just a fucking kid. Uh, uh, I mean, I don't he's know. a ten year old with a mustache and a mullet. That's basically and it. like <laughs> really aging face. <laughs> like clearly ten years older than anyone else in this film. <laughs> exactly. I did have something to point out so in the desert scene did anyone else between the desert scene and the bar scene at the beginning it felt like Leo aged about 20 years like he suddenly looked a lot older 
Oh, he, he clearly didn't apply any sunscreen during the shooting. That must have been one of those. We could get a sponsorship here. We'll see if we can plug one in afterwards. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, we're not getting one from Perry, eh? <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, they found the knife. They've established that there's definitely someone uh, after them. So now we're on the trail of a legend, uh, but Max, Leo, and Patricia, they can't make heads or, heads or tails of it all. So they head back to the bar where the the bar from before, presumably, where the barman very conveniently knows of a Native American shaman in the neighborhood who might know something. So they go to see him and he recounts the legend of the firewalker and warns him about the evil coyote uh, who wants the power for him for himself. And I think also hints that the coyote might actually be the last living descendant of the firewalker. Anyway, back at their hotel room, Patricia uses her psychic abilities apparently, and sets them on a trail that leads them to South America. But before they go, we have a failed attempt by the coyote to kill them all. Luckily, he fails, and we're off to South America, I think in Brazil, I think, um, where, as all weary travelers, they head to the nearest local watering hole, and here we get into a proper bar brawl. This isn't the first yeah. bar fight we've been in uh, within this <laughs> podcast, but uh, how does this one stag up? Well, uh, if we're talking about the actual brawl itself... There's no fucking fighting. There's lots of <laughs> clips of Chuck Norris flying, kicking and stuff. And there's clips of people flying through tables, but no one actually, there's no fight. No one fights back. No one actually throws a punch. It's just him flying, kicking. Yeah. <laughs> well, he does throw a punch and he also does a, a really pretty realistic uh, chokehold, which I liked as a, mm. as a practitioner of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. So I don't yeah, give a I shit about it. how experienced you are in this. <laughs> <laughs> this scene is fucking terrible. <laughs> Although, seven tables, yeah. two windows, one wall of shelves, one door, one chair, and one sip of beer. That's what gets <laughs> broken. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. And some noses, possibly. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, it's a lot of slow motion here. Um, I mean, Chuck Norris has always sort of been... Uh, uh, what's the word? Allowed it as this great like martial arts uh, artist and everything. Um, but, I mean, comparing him to a Jean-Claude Van Damme, like, how do we think he stacks up in his fighting style it doesn't do do any splits uh, doesn't do any splits that's, that's the main yeah, difference that's, between them there's those guys who you know once again they're sort of uh you know leching all over um patricia um and then they kind of throw her out the way and chuck norris sort of stands up and the guy looks at me it's like he thinks oh fuck it's chuck norris like <laughs> you know what i'm gonna do <laughs> you're that meme guy <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> there's some concrete around here if you need a piss. Yeah. Did you know Chuck Norris doesn't wear a condom because there's no such thing as protection from Chuck Norris? <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, man. Hopefully That's there good. would be. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Um, bar brawl, not the greatest one we've seen because, it's, because like we've said, it's not really a brawl. Um, but... Um, before the brawl really kicked off, they got a tip by a shady looking Englishman. Uh, every uh, Englishman in yeah. any movie, uh, you know, had to be, you know. Was he actually you know, English? Because I didn't know if he yes. was like uh, Australian, American, English, Cockney, Australian, South African, Australian again. His his accent is the worst in like yeah. cinema. He, he, is he was all over the place, man. I just he assumed is. he. I just assumed he was English. Um, yeah, um, but he is. Um, if you've seen Evil Dead Three, Army of Darkness, he's the wise old man from that. But is he actually Ooh. English? Because that accent in he's this English. film is fucking terrible. Yeah, it's weird. And I think he's he trying is. not to be English. Because like at one point he's <laughs> South African, then he's proper Cockney, then he's Australian. <laughs> it's like what the director is going was like, on? be English. No, don't be English. Oh, be more it. English. Whatever that is, we'll go with that. Like. <laughs> Maybe, he, you know, his character's actually traveled around the world so much that he's completely lost all sense of belonging. That's what uh, That's it. That's it. Yeah. yeah. That's it. Mm. Yeah. So finally, get the impression, something that makes sense. Do you get the impression he's stuck where he is? Because he obviously needs that $100. So. Yes, exactly. Uh, yeah. I like that every time they ask for information, they always have to pay for it as well. Like, you know, they always get scammed. <laughs> <by this>. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> People giving them information. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, the shady English-ish man, whoever he is, uh, they get a tip from him to go and see a local guide in a neighboring village and to get there and not draw attention, uh, the hapless trio here, they jump on a train disguised as two priests and a nun, which sort of sounds like the beginning of a rude joke. Um, and uh, of course things go wrong on the journey when government soldiers suddenly arrive seemingly out of nowhere and start to pull people out uh, of the train, check their papers, and indeed shooting uh, some of them. Uh, so, yeah, a few thoughts on this scene because I've got issues uh, with this scene. Can we talk I about, yeah, yeah, Chuck Norris's uh, pickup lines here on the, oh. on the train? Because <laughs> <Fuck laughs> yeah. he goes, cringe. 
he, he he's sipping his whiskey right and and um and um <clears throat> melody um says like i thought you guys were supposed to be teetotalers and then he goes i thought you guys i thought you were supposed to be virgins Ugh. flat like, out oh, i thought nuns yeah. were virgins like, yeah, dude, yeah, yeah. like yeah. wow <laughs> fucking hell it's not even in. funny on sort of like a dad joke, embarrassing level. You know, it's just flat out, just not funny. He also looks no. about forty years older than her. Yeah, it's like the whole James Bond thing all over again. Yeah, but it's just funny as well because he's like, she's like, oh, I thought, um, you know, you'd be more subtle than that, and he's like, oh, Leo's the subtle one. I'm in charge of charm. It's like, dude, you're about as charming as a fucking hemorrhoid, mate. It's, like, <laughs> <laughs> it's awful. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so um, not a very kind of uh, high score on the um, pickup lines there. The thing that actually made me really, really cringe, and I found myself on subsequent viewing just kind of skipping through that, is they have they get into a position where they have to perform last rites on the train because these soldiers have been manhandling this one passenger. He's been uh, resisting them. They end up uh, shooting him. He's lying dying on a stretcher. His wife is... Uh, you know, distraught and crying uh, right next to him. She sees uh, Max Leo and Patricia dressed as two priests and, and a nun and obviously wants them to perform the last rites. And then they get into an argument about trying to perform the last rites and they go all goofy about it while this woman is crying right next to her husband. Uh, later, it then turns out that, you know, he's only wounded. He, you know, he already had his papers and everything like that. But I just think this is such a misfire scene. Like, you know, it's oh, uncomfortable this one. that they're... Sorry? <laughs> this, this, this one is the misfire scene. <laughs> I mean, this I find movie, it uncomfortable yeah. because they're trying to make fun of a horrible situation here. Uh, mm. Yeah, yeah, it resolves itself, but it just feels like this is not good humor. Like, even by then, surely someone would have had some issues against it because it's it's just not fun Wait, where you on say any it's level. Not good humor, like it's it's not even intelligent on any level there's a bit where he pretends he's sort of speaking latin he's like armeno yeah. stupido yeah. jerko and it's just like yeah. th <laughs> this just doesn't even make sense not only is it just no. not a bad joke it just doesn't make sense what's fucking happening yeah like, I'm it's, confused it's just by this words coming out of their mouths and it's like <laughs> i'm confused by this entire scene and i don't maybe you guys can elaborate on it a little bit for me here but so they they get stopped on the train by these soldiers are is this just a random occurrence to kind of get some forced humor which doesn't land as you guys have mentioned or are these guys like like the the english english guy in quotation marks um who fed them information then went to el coyote mm -hmm. so are these soldiers have they been sent by el coyote to stop the train or are these just random yeah. like what this is right know. and it's not about the 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 film itself it's the filmmaking some films um are really good at just being a bunch of clever funny sketches and they find a way to tie these sketches together and it you know they're they're pretty shit films but because the ske the set pieces are funny you roll with it this film is a bunch of set pieces that they can't figure out how to tie them together and when you're in the set pieces they're not funny sketches yeah. and it, like i know that's mm. like ultra negative but it doesn't make sense they not only is there no reason for this thing to be happening they can't figure out how it ties to the last thing and when you're in it it's not even funny it's just yeah like <laughs> it's, true. it's just I mean, a mess yeah. i it's, mean going back to your yeah. question there then like i think this is just a random occurrence uh, and i think it's it's i mean it's a random occurrence that it's basically a what do you call them a, a trope of 80s cinema because every movie that takes place within a south american country during this period always had government soldiers manhandling mm. civilians and their main characters somehow getting caught up in it um yeah. so i think this is just a random occurrence i don't think the coyotes got anything to do with it um and but are these again, dudes the same dudes that then turn up in the following scene or are yeah, they completely yeah, yeah. different yes. again in the yeah, okay. run to the banana fields scene the <laughs> yeah. the and there's a fields, weird yeah. bit there where like um <laughs> patricia gets captured and Mm. Like there's a sort of drunk guard who's, you know, I don't know, he's Manuel. going to molest her or something. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Manuel. Yeah. And she says, no, 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 it's okay. It's okay. I'm not a nun. I'm an American. And takes her nun outfit off to reveal like the sort of the beautiful American blonde underneath. And it's like, why are you doing that? Why does that make any <laughs> sense? <laughs> How does that going to make it better? Yeah. 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 Being a nun would have helped you more in this situation. Sure. Yeah. yeah it, it, it made it worse. Yeah. It was like, at first he's like sister. And then he goes... Senorita, and then yeah. he gets that yeah, look yeah. in his eyes and drops his pants. So yeah. he's like, Max, Leo? He's like, no, Manuel. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to pick up uh, Melody, Melody Anderson here, because what I did notice, and this is how fucking 
wrong this film's got things. There's a bit <laughs> where they get chased through the banana fields, right? And they have to fucking run. And uh, Max and Leo sprint. And Patricia, Melody Anderson, she sprints as well. And big up to her, because in so many films, there's like the stereotypical woman run. And she gives it fuck, man, like an athlete <laughs> through that field, yeah. knees yeah. up, sprinting. I was like, oh, man, that's really good to see. But the reason it's fucking ridiculous is if any film was going to have the stupid woman run, this is the film that should have fucking had it, and they didn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Though, so she she faints to get the drop on Manuel, and obviously he drops his trousers thinking his luck's in, and that gives her the opportunity to get his gun. She should have shot his dick off, man. Like, mm. Totally. Yeah. She should have well, realised in the bar at the start that yeah. Max and Leo were a pair of fucking pricks and not gone on this adventure at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah. her third eye told her otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> um, Where were so, we? So, yeah, after she's been um, uh, embarrassing, what's his name? Uh, Manuel. Um, and also, let's not forget, we do get to see uh, Chuck Norris do a, a high-flying kick in slow motion uh, yeah. on a at the back of a poor soldier, um, which is, uh, you know, always a thing to behold Chuck Norris in action, apparently. Yeah. Pulling a face like he's trying to manage a tricky shit at the same time. Right? <laughs> yeah. Did you know there was once a street called Chuck Norris, but the name was changed for public safety because nobody crosses Chuck Norris and lives? <laughs> <laughs> I can believe that. I can believe that. Fact. Again, we Fact. looked it up. <laughs> um, so they escape the troops um, and they then they venture further into the jungle apparently now having completely forgotten that they were supposed to find this local guide uh, mm -hmm. they fall asleep under a tree with the coyote watching them from the shadow so he's been stalking them and following them and then they get a rude awakening the next day by a group of local guerrilla fighters who take them to their camp and uh, prepare to chop Max and Leo's heads off while planning to do Lord knows what to Patricia yeah. but all is well 10 minutes after she was nearly raped last time she's about to nearly get raped again like yeah what the yeah. fuck <laughs> she's just not having a good week yeah. at all um but don't worry because all is well as the gorilla leader arrives just in the nick of time and what are the odds turns out to be max's old army buddy corky uh old sergeant actually uh, i think played by the ever delightful john reese davis and it's party time why not? Yeah. So, yeah, dare I ask, did you guys feel in a party mood uh, after this? I actually got my only yeah. legit laugh of the whole film in this scene. Yeah. <laughs> for real. Is it, is it when, he drinks, when he drinks the whiskey? For, for me, it was that, when they got the guy stood against the tree with the apple on his head. Oh, and he yeah. throws the dagger fun. and just misses his head and the apple and hits the tree, but they have a good laugh yeah. about it. That was funny as well. <laughs> that I also whiskey liked, shot you mentioned. The whiskey shot is like, great, yeah. yeah. I felt like at the end of the film they should have had an end credit sequence where he's just still standing there. I think they yeah. should have made it even longer. They should have made it like 30 seconds long of him just drinking the whiskey. <laughs> that, that cracked me up when he was just drinking. It just went on and on and on forever. It does. It's like... Yeah. Okay. They obviously had to pad out some runtime. I, yeah. I found myself wondering what favour John Reese davies owed someone to end up in this movie. Why like, is he trying to do a southern accent and fails really, really <laughs> badly? Exactly. exactly. <laughs> but it's, it's like, it's you can tell they're trying to emulate Indiana Jones and they literally got one of the actors from Indiana Jones to come into this sort of cut rate Indiana Jones movie. It's, I would really hope that he actually uh, got, paid got paid really, really well <laughs> yeah. uh, for this. <laughs> Did you know Chuck um, Norris can unscramble an egg? <laughs> Facts. I looked yeah. it up. <laughs> um, yeah. I do want to dwell a little bit on uh, Corky Taylor here because I'm just wondering, sort of, um, you know, what did you guys find about the whole scene with the uh, Corky, Max, and Leo uh, sitting there? Well, and talking? they're obviously, yeah, they're, they're trying to give him some backstory, right? To uh, yeah. to Max, and they're also trying to. It's kind of like foreshadowing, shadowing if, in, in that if you continue your ways, you're going to turn out, out like this guy who just wants to be a king of, you know, uh, native people and uh, live in a, ca uh, you know, in a temple somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Like, that's that's what I got of it. Like, yeah. that's what this scene is trying to do. I mean, I think also the whole scene is a weird sort of strange tonal shift for what is generally sort of uh, trying to be a lighthearted action comedy, um, you know, in, you know, in paragraphs. Um, but, I mean, Corky, I think, has some clear signs of, uh, PTSD. Uh, mm. You know, he mentions that he was in Nam together with Max, and uh, he got kicked out. Then he became a mercenary in Africa, a drug runner, and then fell in with with the guerrillas. Um, 
And he has this thing that he says, dying is, isn't something I worry about. And later on, when they're preparing to leave, uh, Patricia asks Max if you think, um, if Max thinks he will ever see Corky again. And Max just looks out and goes, no. And I just found that whole, again, it's a strange tonal, sh- you know, it's mm-hmm. a strange tonal shift in the middle of what's supposed to be a lighthearted comedy. And again, it feels a yeah. bit misplaced, I think. You know, they're trying to be a little bit cleverer than they got the rights to be, uh, I think, here. The problem is they're introducing that with a character that you've only gotten to know for two minutes. Yeah. That would have made more sense to elaborate on the history between maybe Leo and Max and build that emotional content. Yeah, exactly. It's a bit, it's a bit like that guy in Apocalypse Now, you know. <laughs> it's colonel. sort of that. Yeah. You know, they're sort of trying to cash in on that a yeah. little bit. Um, which Not cr- is, yeah. Yeah, a little bit weird. Anyway, so after that mood killer, uh, the trio is put on their merry way by Corky, who gives them his command vehicle, which is a Volkswagen Beetle painted in camouflage green. That does not have the suspension to navigate a jungle. (laughs) It really does. It's it's just so stupid. Um, And yeah, off they go. Um, They don't get very far as they come to a croc-infested river, so they decide to camp there for the night. And after a hearty meal, Leo goes off to wash the dishes, but he never returns. And it's mm. not because there's a lot of dishes. And this is where <laughs> Norris gets to show that all those acting lessons really paid off. What do we think of this scene here? Campfire by the river. Where Leo disappears. I know he's grieving, but he completely flips on Melody. Like, he's just an asshole to her in this scene. I get he's lost his friend, but, you know, there's no need to be a dick, is there? They're both in the same situation. Yeah, mm. exactly. And I just, I mean, I found this scene laughable because you could really feel that Norris is acting. You know, he's kicking at the fire. He's staring off into the distance and <laughs> the camera's panning away. He's kicking at the fire because that's the only acting he knows to do. Yeah, like, still oh, that's nice. That's how to do. <laughs> you should have called this movie Fire Kicker. Instead. Fire Kicker is a much better movie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, or maybe in doing that he actually became the fire walker it, no never mind uh, I just kept thinking to myself Leo stay dead like just exit of this film now while you can yeah, like, just, just gracefully exit like, gracefully <laughs> exit you're Lou Gossett yeah. Jr you're much better than this <laughs> <laughs> Um, so yeah now it's just Max and Patricia left so they head deeper into the jungle and eventually somehow I <laughs> don't know how they make it to the temple of the Firewalker where they finally come face to eye patch with the coyote Nice. and spoiler Leo as well uh, who was actually just taken captive by coyote and not eaten by a crocodile which might actually have been a much better way for him to go so coyote now kidnaps kidnaps Patricia uh, instead and prepares her for the ritual to claim the Firewalker's power and he leaves Max and Leo in a lurch dangling over a pit of boiling hot water and so the stage is set for the final showdown. I think maybe here we should also pause to talk a little bit about the Coyote who's the big bat um, of the movie who is played by um, Billy. uh, Billy. Yeah, Billy. Another Billy. <laughs> Who's actually not called knows. Billy this time. I saw his name yeah. up in the credits at the start of the film. I was like, please say he's called Billy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's played yeah. by Sonny Landham, who is now making his third appearance on this podcast, um, I think. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, if you. So he's playing the coyote who claims to be. Um, the last living descendant of the Firewalker. He's very evil because he spots an eye patch, which, if you notice, keeps on changing uh, mm. from left to right eye throughout the whole movie, um, which again <laughs> shows a little bit about the attention to detail they might have had. I don't uh, think it this. was a disabled thing. I think it was just a style choice. It's a style choice. I'll yeah. wear on the left yeah. today. <laughs> <laughs> what do we actually think of the Coyote as a um, uh, as a villain? Uh, I know I'm going off on a little bit of a tangent here, but uh, yeah. what do we think of? Of him. Did you know Chuck know. Norris's dog is trained to pick up its own poop because Chuck Norris will not take <laughs> shit from anybody? <laughs> he also has a, a bear rug on his floor, but the bear is actually alive. It's just afraid to move. <laughs> Chuck Norris's daughter lost her virginity, but Chuck Norris went and got it back. <laughs> Again, I don't know. I, mean, all facts. I, I think it's the all Coyote uh, is not bad as villains go. I, I just mm. think they should have utilized him a bit more, you know, like bit more about his motive and you know his his um properly evil and uh, yeah like, um, he felt set yeah. up like a bond villain again mm. yeah like the yeah. guy at the start yeah, yeah exactly um i actually quite like sunny landham i mean again like sunny landham is good in playing these bad guys but again i agree he feels underserved here again yeah, there's not really much backstory but at this point you don't really care uh, much um i think it was only on the 
uh, third viewing that I realized that he's supposed to be the last living descendant of uh, of the Firewalker. But again, you don't really care that much. There's this odd scene I wanted to just talk about where um, this is going back a little bit, but this English-ish man has um, gone to the Coyote and saying that I, I found these um, Max Leo and Patricia here. I'm, I'm going to lead them on a you know wild goose chase into the jungle. And as he's telling this to Coyote, Coyote's just sitting there reading a comic book. Yeah, um, Cyphers. Yeah, which yeah. is just random, you know. Uh, what is this really... move he does? So he does it to him and then later tries it on both Max and Leo. It's like, was it death by squash your face? Like he just holds you up and squishes your face in and like, what, <laughs> what's going on there? Like <laughs> Death by squish your face. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You? Apparently he must be really good at doing it because I remember my grandmother would do that all the time and I'm still alive. <laughs> holds you up against the wall. Like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at those little cheeks, squishy, squishy face. Uh, maybe that's the thing she did wrong. You know, she didn't bash me up against the wall. Uh, maybe. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what she was doing wrong. Okay. She wasn't bashing you against the wall enough. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, so, yeah. Um, and we're on to the final showdown. Um, again, dare I ask what, what we think of the final showdown here? <laughs> Do you know, I'm 95% convinced Sonny Landham is in fact a robot in this scene. For sure. <laughs> like, he gets stabbed. That's not and random. He's like... <laughs> it would just make sense given how everything else makes sense in the film, really, wouldn't it? I mean, the way he's lumbering around though, with his like, wide-eyed stare and he's like... Dur, 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 dur. And then he dies and catches fire. And it's like, <laughs> huh. he's definitely a robot. So I've got a confession. I hated this film so much, I haven't actually seen the ending because I stopped it both times. <laughs> <laughs> I got as far as Leo you know, as much, swinging you know, over as much. the pit. And then like, to be honest, the council started drilling a hole outside. So I went and watched that for a while. And I came back <laughs> and Patricia was putting a tiara on. <laughs> so I don't really know what happened. <laughs> but it sounds good. I watched it. I watched it, but uh, it's, it's, it's gone. I don't they remember. They got their faces yeah. squished by a robot. That's basically okay. what you missed. Yeah. What, what was yeah, all this fires. setting on fire thing? Let's talk about um, that. That sounds <laughs> no good. No one has an answer. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, trying to think back. What was it that happened? So, back when they were seeing the American, uh, Native American shaman, um, as they're walking away, uh, he taps Patricia on the shoulder saying that this here will protect you and gives her this little bag of... Um, well, he says it's, you know, dust from bones spice. and magic. And she goes, oh, okay, spice. Yeah, spice melange. Mm. Um, and uh, then it will protect them. Then it doesn't get referred to or used or seen or spoken of for the entire movie until at the very last minute when they've hopefully finally killed the coyote. He's lying uh, face down on this slab of concrete in the middle of the sacrificial chamber. She sprays this dust uh, over him and says... Good night, coyote. And then she walks off, and then he catches fire. <laughs> Perfect, <laughs> right? how, how come they've got Chuck Norris the in this movie. film? And the, uh, how come they've got Chuck Norris in this film? And the ending wasn't Chuck Norris having a fight with him. Oh no, it was. <laughs> yeah. It was. Oh, okay. um, yeah. well, well, it was Chuck Norris getting his face squashed for a bit. Okay. Yeah, and yeah. I mean, he. I mean, to be fair, he was trying to kick him and roundhouse kick him, and they did a few slow motions, and Chuck Norris was yelling at him, and um, I am yeah, Chuck but, Norris. <laughs> yeah, something like that, or uh, all this kind of you know, war, you know, warrior cry out there. And, I had another um, theory for why he catches fire at the end as well. Um, so about midway through the film, just after the banana field chase. They're all sort of sat there in the evening on the banana tree. And Patricia says, God, I'm hungry. And she is eating a fuckload of bananas. And I suddenly remembered, bananas are radioactive, right? They've got potassium in them. So I started Googling mm. it on my phone to see how many bananas <laughs> you need to eat to be radioactive. Ooh. And I think she ate so many bananas that at the end, Sonny Landham died of radiation poisoning. Well, this would explain her third eye. <laughs> it Man, would. It would. This movie has layers to it. This movie has layers. layers. Yeah. Oh my God, layers. we're just un. And you can one peel one. them back. Them. <laughs> peel yeah. them back. Peel them back. Did you know that um, Chuck Norris is the reason that Where's Wally is in hiding? Where's Waldo for our American audience? <laughs> yeah. He also sleeps with a pillow under his gun. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently he's counted to infinity twice. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. yeah. So... Um. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, Coyote's dead, and they find the treasure, and everyone's happy. And yeah, I think that's the end of Firewalker. I think let's uh, <laughs> so let's get to the end of this. Gen uh, genuine we're... question: Like, I did try and watch this twice. Admittedly, I didn't get to the end both times. But 
none of it really stuck. Even talking about it now, I just can't really remember mm. any of this film because it just sort of like <laughs> it's all over the place, and I don't still don't really know what happened. Did anyone else find that? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's probably why I had to I had to go back and rewatch it about four times in the preparation. Yeah. Uh, no, you'll never get that time back. Good effort. Uh, it's either that or I'm just getting old. I don't know. Um, <laughs> Did you know no, that could... Chuck Norris knows Victoria's secret? <laughs> Ooh, interesting. Um, did you know there actually is James Bond connections between this movie and uh, and James Bond? Um, so yeah, just let me do my thing here. So, um, <laughs> okay. I, so I actually found two James you, Bond. You guys shut the fuck up a minute and let me run this. <laughs> okay, <laughs> um, it will be quick. Uh, don't worry. But I found two connections. Uh, so John Reese Davis, who plays Corky Taylor. He also played General General Leonid Pushkin in 007 The Living Daylights. Uh, so that's one connection. Number two is that one of the stuntmen of Firewalker is Joe Epstein, who's quite the Hollywood veteran stuntman. Is he related to on, Jeffrey Epstein? Uh-oh. Uh, I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> He's worked on Captain America, uh, Iron Man, The Abyss, uh, Jurassic Park Lost World, and our namesake, The Last Action Hero, with Arnold Schwarzenegger, and also Cowboys and Aliens, which uh, starred the Bond du jour. Mr. Daniel Craig. So, yeah, there you go. Two connections. Nice. Anyway. Very nice. Did you know that Chuck Norris once won a game of Connect Four in only three moves? <laughs> <laughs> yes, but I've got to say that's that's pretty incredible uh, trivia tracking because when I look for trivia this film, I couldn't fucking yeah. find anything. It's very <laughs> it little trivia. It took a whole nothing. afternoon of going through each and every single crew member <laughs> knowing got- there has to be a connection. There has to be a connection. You've got one of those... You've got one of those wall boards, haven't you, with the red string? With red strings and, and everything like that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the whole living room was covered in this. There, there's and one I trivia to find in, the, in that uh, in Walker, Texas Ranger, uh, Chuck Norris's dad is called Firewalker. That's his name. Oh, there we go. Yeah. There's the link. Wow, connection. <laughs> if I'd known that before, this film probably would have made a lot more sense. Yeah, yeah. Um, I noticed probably. in this podcast we didn't get our Alien reference, so I'm just mm. going to say that Alien's a really good film. <laughs> yes, nice one. <laughs> well, you could talk. Maybe his, uh, you know, Billy's move and his is is, is, is a face hugger. No, <laughs> yeah, uh, for yeah. leave him hanging. Uh, possibly, don't dignify <laughs> <Is> there, that. <laughs> is there something about uh, you know they say in space no one can hear you scream, but Chuck Norris can. Oh, that's it. Yeah. Did you know that Chuck <laughs> Norris's belly button is actually a power outlet? <laughs> <laughs> You know, our podcast is categorised as film history. I don't know what yeah. history anyone's going to get out of this episode. <laughs> well, this, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's... This has just gotten very, very, very silly. <laughs> but it's kind of, it's obvious, it's obvious why they made this film, right? Because uh, Indiana Jones and, uh, you know, Temple of Doom I, had become before them huge success, right? So, you know, like they, they try to make an, what do you call it, an homage to, you know, to those kind of adventure films, which again, Indiana Jones is also an homage to the 1930s uh, adventure mm-hmm. films, right? Yeah, yeah. I think and, you're giving uh, this film way too no, much respect, yeah, yeah, but man. It's not respect. It's just like this is why it's a business decision, right? They thought, it, you know, Chuck Norris was popular. Um, he had made you was know, he? some pretty good. Well, he in was, the late I mean, 80s, he, he was, no one gave yeah, a shit about yeah, Chuck Norris. It's because no, they was, couldn't afford. Arnie. No, no, they, they couldn't they afford Van Damme. They couldn't afford any of the fucking Sly or any other real action <laughs> well, that's, heroes. That's another one. So they got I Chuck think this Norris. movie would have. I think this movie would have been a lot better with Arno, Arnie as the lead role. That would have been. Fun. Imagine, Arnie it, imagine, yeah, yeah, but, but Arnie wouldn't. The, the one-liners. The the, yeah, but he he can do that kind of uh, you know not taking himself too serious kind of. <laughs> and, and I uh, reckon they put it out to every yeah. action hero, and they all said "fuck off," and Chuck Norris <laughs> said, "I'll do it." <laughs> <laughs> something i thought, thought was really interesting is this is a canon movie and apparently yeah. this was a really profitable film for <laughs> canon and then a year later they started going bankrupt yeah which um, kind of says some kind of says something about all the other movies <laughs> they've been putting up so far there's this wonderful quote uh, from uh, melody anderson about the film like she, she basically says you know working with um chuck norris uh was you know privilege you know the both of the guys you know were really nice guys and hey even though it was a canon film i still got paid and it's mm. <laughs> fuck it out yeah <laughs> i got uh, my money in, uh, interesting thing uh just to take it a little bit more serious maybe but i think 
So I was wondering why we'd never really see anything of Melody Anderson since, because I actually think mm. that she, you know, she was, you know, she was definitely good in Flash Gordon, and I, you know, I kind of like her in this one um, as well. But uh, it turns out she's actually left acting completely. Uh, she kind of <laughs> pivoted like quite majorly, and is now a, um, was it a social counselor in New York, um, sort of uh, dealing with. Uh, um, Uh, what is it, uh, people who've come off addictions and um, and has been working there for quite a number of decades now. And uh, yeah, I wonder I think, why. You know, I wonder her. why. <laughs> I mean, it is possible. Like, you know, actors' careers can be fucking ruined by mm. a flop of a film. It happens quite frequently and there is a good chance after this film they struggled for work. This film was profitable, though. I mean, yeah, yeah, well, but for canon, but not, it doesn't necessarily mean people are going to jump in and try and get the, <laughs> the actors from it. Uh, and Chuck Norris ended up, uh, he ended up making two more comedies after this one. And were they you good? Know, which, no. <laughs> we, but, Do you even know but the name of them? Do people, people remember the name of them? <laughs> people like them, yeah. I mean, mm. the, yeah. I don't know. I haven't watched many Chuck Norris's film, but I heard that he has a few that are considered pretty good. Um, Way of which the Dragon, a like comedy, yeah. <laughs> but, Given uh, how much we've ragged on Chuck Norris in this episode, I'm shitting myself now. He's going to be knocking on our doors, isn't he? Like, we should do. We should do more. Did you know Chuck Norris can sneeze with his eyes open? <laughs> <laughs> I actually tried that as well. I didn't really succeed. Yeah. That's why you've got no eyes. <laughs> I got no eyes right now. I'm actually <laughs> legally blind. And uh, um, Walker Texas Ranger was was on TV for like almost ten years. Yeah, and so it's, it's basically this this movie, but so set in neighbors. modern America. <laughs> <laughs> is he a ninja in that as well? Like, does he like kick the crap out of people with his? Yeah, he does yeah, kick yeah. people he does. a lot. He kicks, yeah. 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 So okay. Yeah. Anyway, I'm almost dreading this, uh, or actually, I'm looking forward to this. So, what do we think of the scores? Who wants to go first? Uh, Leon, I think yours is going to be very short and sweet. So, let's start with you. Yeah. Well, originally it was three words, but I thought that wasn't fair, so I bolstered it. Um, it's like one of those teen stoner movies, except instead of teenagers, it's unfunny grown-ups, and instead of being stoned, it's just really shit. And I'm going to give it one out of ten because I like Dale R. Den in Flash Gordon. <laughs> That's one. one. Yeah. All right, Dan, over to you. Um, this might be our shortest podcast episode. I, I think, think so, actually. Right? I think, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But we didn't really have that much to work with either, so. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we've hit our first major turkey, to be honest. Like, I think I'd rather watch Black Rain again, to be honest. Like, <laughs> yes, Black Rain. Is not Black yeah, Rain we we ragged on Black Rain, but yeah. this is way worse. I like Black so. Rain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I'm, I'm going to... Probably go with maybe a one out of ten. Yeah, it's <laughs> nice maybe one. maybe two. I don't know. Maybe two. <laughs> I'm non-committed like that assassin at the start. I could. Let's could do you justify your know. two points if you had to? Why would why would it get two? Um. No. See, I couldn't no. either. So yeah. one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'll just try to be kind, you know. <laughs> and you, Bjorn, what are you? Uh, and you. I think I'll probably go the the highest here. I'm going to go for a three. <laughs> oh. <laughs> just, <laughs> just because, I, you know, I think, you know, the, the, it's it's Because you it's look like Chuck Norris. No, because it's, it's so bad, it's funny to me. Like, there's so many scenes where I just laughed because it's so ridiculous. Like, it's that kind of good that it's almost, no, sorry, bad, <laughs> bad that it's almost good films uh, with some action in it um, that you can enjoy if you completely turn your brain off for well this movie should have, let's be honest it should have been 30 minutes shorter at least yeah I'd say about <laughs> an hour been, and 30 minutes it, yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> it was way too long um, but yeah I mean John Rhys Davis drinking that whiskey you know that <laughs> boosted the score from a two to three for me so I give it a three <laughs> that's the part I feel generous order, today based on what you were saying like I You very quickly determined, okay, this isn't a great film. And I was kind of hoping it was going to be so bad it was funny. Yeah. And what I was most disappointed at was it wasn't even so bad it was funny. It was just bad. I think I think like, it's the it could be also be the mood you're in when you're watching it. If you're a bit tired or you had a bit to drink or maybe, you know, smoked something, it could be... So if you're whacked out on heroin yeah. in the corner of yeah. your living room and it's playing in the background <laughs> and in the distance you can kind of hear it, then it's bearable. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I enjoyed it the second, the first time I hated it completely, but the second time I watched it, I was like, okay, I'm just going to watch it again. And uh, three. Yeah, I think <laughs> I'm coming apt. a little bit from the same place as you, Bjorn. Like, I think yeah. this is a silly movie. I think this is a dumb movie. Uh, and it really it's has offensive. no business being <laughs> as enjoyable as I think it's. I honestly think it actually mm. is um, a little bit. Um, yes, I enjoy. 
you know, I actually enjoyed this more than I think I should have. But I think for me, like I think I was saying uh, in the beginning, it's the kind of movie we would watch at children's parties uh, when I was a boy, and then we'd go to um, you know to a nearby woods or playground and act out the and act out the whole thing. Yeah. Um, and I also quite like the relationship between Max Leo and Patricia when Max is not trying to you know. Um, you know, pick up uh, Patricia and run his terrible pickup lines um, on her. Um, so, yeah, I would rate this a three um, as well. Mm. Uh, but I think it's more for the childhood memories it invokes <laughs> rather than the movie uh, itself. I like that you guys are saying, like, you're giving it a three out of ten, like you're trying to be, oh, no, actually, it wasn't so bad. I'll give it a three out of That's three out of ten. That's fucking shit. Yeah. <laughs> it is. It is the it's not shit, like you're saying five or six. Bad as, as a one. It's still yeah, not it's not as bad as a one. <laughs> Might it's, as well be. <laughs> <laughs> three because they no, can well, string know, a fucking to be, sentence together the score has to mean something like you know if it's a one then it's a uh, oh yeah it's the absolute worst thing you've ever seen yeah up yeah there. <laughs> it is, i've uh, seen worse movies i've, I've seen worse movies probably than this. The, what have you seen that's worse than this trolls what's trolls and is it really worse <laughs> than this? Oh, yeah, yeah trolls is infamous yeah <laughs> but, uh, uh, well, let's do that in next month. Resurgence is the worst yeah. pile of crap I've ever watched. Anyway, it's not worse than yeah. this, though. This is the no, worst. It is. <laughs> it is. It is. Um, all right. I think yeah. before we get into an actual Chuck 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 Norris inspired fist fight here, um, I think <laughs> what are we watching next time? I think it's yeah. um, Leon's turn. Um, as an ode to Dune being released, which we're all incredibly hey. fucking hyped about, and we were actually talking about before this podcast, we will be watching Tremors. The original <laughs> Sandworm film. Um, as far as I know, June stole it from yeah. Tremors. So let's go back to the original. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. That should be really good fun. Yeah. That's a good movie. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So I think with that, yeah. not much left to say. Then, uh, yeah, this is a terrible movie. Uh, happy birthday to us and look forward to Tremors next time. All right. Yeah. All right. Cheers, all. Another Chuck Norris thing to end on quickly. Oh, um, the, the dinosaurs the looked at facts. Chuck Norris the wrong way once, and you know what happened to them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there was also these four guys. That Good night, coyote.